start the recording. Nicholas, hello, Nicholas. Hi, Akinga, how are you? Hello, hi. Welcome. Thank you. Ramsey, hello. Angelina, welcome. Hey. How are you doing, Viviana? How are you? Good. How are you? I'm good. It's good to see you. Great to be here. I hope you're enjoying the Irish weather for the summer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, poor Laura, one of our Lovely. speakers is calling in from Spain from the heat wave. So we'll have to show a bit of sympathy. Okay, no problem. How are you doing, Peter? How are you? Welcome. Great to see so many faces this evening and more people still coming in. Hiya, Peter. Okay, well, what we'll do is it's three minutes past now. Um, I'm going to jump into the slideshow and I'm going to get things going because the room is starting to get pretty full. So I will share my screen. Wrong screen. Okay, can everybody see my screen? Yeah? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Good stuff. Yeah, I can. Good stuff. Okay, everybody, um, I'd like to welcome you all here this evening. Tonight's hosted by myself and Simon. We do have a private Telegram group. We're going to drop a link of that into the chat. So you are all free to well, free and welcome to join the chat in there and continue on the conversation afterwards. There is a feedback form from meetups.com and Eventsbrite. So if you've come from either of them, Please do fill out the, the form and give us a rating because it helps other people to find the meetup group. We are recording, but if you don't want to appear on camera, we suggest that you either just turn your camera off or alternatively, you can switch to avatar mode and you can appear on avatar and keep yourself anonymous. And then nothing that we say here this evening is financial advice. So just our code of conduct for everybody that's new and not familiar with it. We ask that in our meeting this evening, we ask everybody to be aware of others, to be friendly and patient, to be welcoming and respectful, to be open to all questions and viewpoints, to be understanding of differences and to be kind and considerate to others. Just our next upcoming event then is next Tuesday at 7 p.m. And we're going to be having the general crypto chat with Simon and his UK group. And then after that, every year we take an annual holiday. Um, myself and Simon actually do give ourselves a little bit of a break from the meetups and we take the month of August off. Now, after that, in September, I'm starting a postgrad and I'm not sure what, day, what evenings that's going to be on. So I'm not 100% sure at the moment if this particular meetup group will be back on a Thursday night or if we'll have to host it a different night. But you'll find out all the information if you're in the Telegram group or if you're following the meetups pages or Eventbrite. So we'll have all the information there. So then this evening, we are talking about personal branding in the decentralized world. And personal branding is not just about the decentralized world. It's actually about how you per, 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 put yourself out there online full stop. So we're going to be touching on a lot of things here this evening. And I'm really super excited for the panel that we have on. So this evening, we have Joyce Maloney. And Joyce is an NFT artist that entered the space quite some time ago and has quite a large following on her social media accounts. We also have Maria Oche. She is also a bit of an influencer there on LinkedIn. I'm not sure whether she would consider herself so or not, but I definitely would. We have Felipe with us. Some of you here may already be familiar with Felipe. Felipe is CEO of Proud Class, 
and Crowdclass done the certificates of learning for us when we ran our expert track there um, some time ago. And finally, Colin, in from Spain, we have Laura Ballon. Laura, how do I pronounce your second name? Bolanos. I got that right. Bolenos, even with the accent, Bolenos, uh, Laura Bolenos, <laughs> here with us this evening. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen and I am going to ask Laura, seems we were on you, to introduce yourself first. Tell us who you are, how you got involved in Web3 um, and how you're finding things. All right. Hello, hello, everybody. Well, my name is Laura. I'm from Costa Rica, but currently living in Valencia, Spain. Uh, well, my starting in Web3 just was just because of chance, you know. <laughs> um, there was an opportunity to be a marketing strategist for a gaming company four years ago. And I took it. Um, we create an amazing realm. We did everything. And... Um, and yeah, and that's, that was my first step on this. I didn't even know what was an NFT at the time. Um, I was not aware of the blockchain. Um, I didn't know anything, anything, nothing. So, and then, you know, it's like this roller coaster. Once you are inside the cart, you cannot get out. And I'm in that roller coaster right now. <laughs> so let's see what is going to happen now. And you're also an educator, Laura, That is that right? Yes, I am. I'm a teacher in a university. Um, I do not teach blockchain, but I do teach big data, open data, um, marketing, also e-commerce. That's my specialty, actually. Um, I started on e-commerce 12 years ago, more or less. Um, and since then, I, I'm just hooked up with the internet and, you know, and digital businesses that is you know what yeah th that's why we are here today right because we love that exactly. we love the internet we love the connection and yeah that's it super happy to be here thank you paula and thank you um the, the community excellent. um you know for the opportunity excellent and maria would you like to introduce yourself please yeah sure good evening everybody um so i don't i don't think there's much to me um but like um paula said i don't think i would want to um call myself an influencer yet uh because i feel there is uh, so much that comes with influencing and all of that um i'm a social media manager and uh, with three advocates i got into the space through it was an opportunity actually it was an opportunity to work with a, a particular brand, um, XT Exchange. It's a it's an exchange, a P two P company. So I got an opportunity to work with them, and I decided to explore more what the blockchain and the Web three space was all about. And by then, I was already on LinkedIn. I was I, that was I think last year, late last year. But by then, I was already on LinkedIn building my personal brand and. I think at that time I I had over 15 um K followers on, on LinkedIn. So when the job came and I got that to um um use my personal brand to promote XT Exchange, I saw it as an opportunity to explore more. And through that I can see it's been a very interesting space. So I also um use my uh, my LinkedIn page to talk about Web3 and all of that. So yeah, I think that's all there is to me, really. Excellent. And have you found yourself also in the web tree rabbit hole that you can't get out of? I don't quite understand the question. Okay. Uh, you're also interested in journalism as well. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I am currently studying, um, studying that in the university. Excellent. How long have you got left in your studies? I've got a year left, all things being equal. That's amazing. That's amazing. Yeah. Well, I wish you all the success with that. Felipe, Thank I'm going to hop on to you now and ask you to introduce yourself. 
Uh, hi, hi everyone. Thanks, Paula, for uh, for inviting me to be here. Nice, nice to meet everyone. Glad to see so so, so many many faces and participations. A little bit about me. I am Philippe. I am uh, one of the founders uh, at at Crowdclass. Crowdclass is um, a startup focused on uh, creating tools for brands and creators to engage with their communities uh, through Web3 uh, and NFTs. Um, and, and yeah, that's a little bit uh, um, about, about me. Uh, before that, I've, I've worked in, in several different um, roles. I was business development at other startups, but before Crowdclass, I also worked at a, 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 a protocol as, as ecosystem developer. That's kind of where I started working full time on 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 this space, and and eventually started uh, crawl class as my um, my main uh, uh, my main startup. Paula here is actually the first official user of crawl class, so uh, it's it's <laughs> something that I also want to highlight, and that's also why it's a pleasure to be here um and um and and yeah uh, that was when you, you were in your tech stars journey so exactly about a year ago through. about a year ago we were starting our very early first version of the product and uh and yeah paula is the early adopter of the early adopters and we'll never definitely forget about that and of course we, we're OG. still in touch <laughs> you are <laughs> and uh yeah glad to be here Excellent. Great to have you, Felipe. And last, but by no means least, I'm really pleased to introduce Joyce. Joyce became quite a good friend of mine over Blockchain Ireland Week. We had some amazing girly giggles together. So we did. Joyce, would you like to hop on and introduce yourself? Um, hello. Good evening, everyone. I'm from uh, I'm currently in Cork in Ireland, and I'd like to say hello to everybody. Um, and I have good reception, which I'm absolutely delighted with, Paula. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose, um, I suppose to deep dive into my own background, I come from a kind of dessert, uh, how can I say, a diverse background. I, um, I suppose I have a diploma and bachelor's degree in fine art. And I also have a HD in adult education from Mary Immaculate College. So I have... I suppose through through that I've been a bookie, I've been a teacher, and I mean I suppose for over the past two decades I've worked here at the help board in New York. You didn't yeah. uh, have a send me the address. Oh no shit, yeah, yeah, I can do it now if you want. Hold on for a second. Sorry about that. You're okay. Go ahead, continue there. I suppose, uh, yeah, I suppose. Well, for the past two decades, I have worked in the, um, the health board here in Cork uh, with an intellectual disability, adults with intellectual disability. Um, I've also studied project management in um, MTU many moons ago. And so I've run, sent, um, I've been in charge of uh, creative centres here in Cork and Cope Foundation. I've run different projects associated with education and um, promoting people's abilities I don't like saying disabilities because we all have our own different abilities and um qualities and so on and so forth so that's where that's my background but come 2020 I kind of like took a sabbatical and uh I'll never forget getting an email from I can't what's her name the girl from the wow well, world of women to come involved in a project for nfts and I read the email and I goes what is an NFT? <laughs> I had actually a clue in 2020 what an NFT was, a non-functional token. I didn't know what she was on about. I had never really been exposed to, um, I would have considered myself to be big into technology at all at that at that place in my life. Um, I remember quite only eight weeks later, they exploded. They became very... Um, they were everywhere and I was like oh my god so then during 2020 I suppose um when I couldn't journey anywhere the journey for me became the fact it went inwards and I started looking at different possibilities upskilling learning different applications via YouTube because you couldn't I mean being in Cork you couldn't even go five miles outside your own gaff so <laughs> basically uh, I started learning 
and looking at the and I un understood then what NFTs were self-taught completely and I started I started looking at UX and UA design and different kind of types of graphic applications and I said I want to start this journey of NFTs myself because I had started um, in 2017 my own um, movement in fine art because I suppose for me when I couldn't fit in I said I'm certainly not going to be doing landscapes or a cow over the over the fence that most of my contemporaries seek but I mean I'm not dissing their work but I well I always kind of pictured myself as a visual storyteller so I started a movement called Story Emotionism in 2017 and prior to COVID, I was, I was actually on a good track of making my name. I had two solo shows in New York. I showed in LA. I showed in Berlin, Paris, Lisbon. So I, I actually, my work was, um, I, I was traveled to Dubai because I was one of the shortlisted artists under illustration for the World of Art in Dubai in November 2018. Wow. I illustrated the poetry of Sheikh Mohammed Ben Rashid Al Maktoum. <laughs> So, so that's an like, uh, Well, look, um, at, the, at the end of the day, prior to COVID, I was on a good journey, but then COVID and the world stopped and it got quiet. So um, that journey kind of like was parked, you know, because of COVID, I couldn't travel. And I mean, I would say that the world has been very good to me because I took the, the leap of making, trying to make my own brand and trying to make something different and um how can i say striving to be uh to start my own journey in the fine art world because i want I, I considered myself as a visual storyteller and the nft journey then was something different altogether because that that happened as as i said before i think i nearly dropped my coffee cup when i heard about people selling his his NFTs at Sotheby's. Um, yeah, so basically I kind of like went hell for leather and started. Um, that's why I'm considered one of the first NFT Irish artists. I had my own website in February 21. Um, January 21, I started my own website in NFTs called Story uh, WW Poetic Conceptions. And uh, I used OpenSea at the time, but I've kind of like reduced on OpenSea because of the they started pulling the secondary market phase. So yeah. I kind of yeah. like revolved and I kind of like revolted against that, like rebelled, you know, no, no, I was so basically. And yeah, you use I'm, both LinkedIn and Instagram, correct? Yes, they're, they're by two platforms. I mean, you can't be everywhere. You're only one no. person. So like I've, I've over 15,000 followers on LinkedIn. Um, so I try to engage daily. Um, on LinkedIn with my community because like I mean if somebody the way I look at it if somebody took the interest to follow me and look at my journey I should be able to repay that favor and look into their lives and see because like my my profile on LinkedIn is very much like every day is a school day and it, I mean we have a chance to learn something new and different from everybody and I mean my first line is people fascinate me to be fair I mean, that's why that's and being a, 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 a how, how can I say it? when I said this about personal branding, I mean, be the reflection you want to receive of people. I think if you're 100 percent, yeah, if you're transparent and you're open and honest and have the level of dignity and respect for other people, it will sh surely be reflected upon you anywhere you go. So. Excellent. Well, that's a, a great introduction, Joyce. And Joyce, just staying with you and also directing this question to Felipe for a minute. We're going to talk about leveraging NFTs and blockchain. So Joyce, as an artist producing NFTs and Felipe, with your focus on NFTs for loyalty and engagement, how have NFTs and blockchain technology played a role in growing your personal brand and what unique uh, opportunities do they offer to you? Well, I'll start by saying, I mean, in April, uh, just gone in New York, I spoke in Manhattan about community bases in NFT Web3 spaces. And I was one of the chosen artists to have my work on Times Square. Now, I stood there from Mallow County Cork on Times Square looking up at my piece, which is very large on the corner of a building in Times Square. And I said, wow, in, in such a short space of time, I went from Mallow County Cork to Times Square. But I, the only reason I got there 
was through the influences of NFTs and going to, how can I say, going down the rabbit hole, as you'd say, into NFTs and putting myself completely out there. I mean, in the in the basis of the last 36 months, I have become techie savvy. I have learned, self-learned UI, UX. I have done, now I'm one of the founder members of the AICC community on LinkedIn, which we've nearly 8,000 members since last July. I met a guy called Seth in Manhattan when I went over to NFT NYC in June last year, 22. Uh, we got into a discussion and I said that there is going to be a massive opening in AI going forward for all creative minds. So he, he started that platform, AICC. Um, and since then, we've nearly 8,000 on board in the under 12 months, to be fair, because he didn't start it till the end of July or the, the start mm. of August. And like we have, we have everybody like that that have been exposed to Mid Journey and Dali too. And we have dentists, doctors, nurses, interior designers, architects. I mean, but to be fair, the relevance of NFTs to me, it has really opened my mind to so much more. And I mean, how can I say as a brand itself? I mean, it's opened possibilities. I think, you know, I suppose sure in lockdown as well, I was looking at very much the premise of metaphysics and how if you can think it, you can touch it. And I mean, mm -hmm. that's basically with mid journey, you can actually translate your thoughts visually now, which is massive. I mean, we've come so far in, in creativity. It's and like it's limitless. And that's what we are as, as human beings. We are limitless. And I think the fact that we have so many applications there that we can actually transport our ideas visually now into any kind of like animation video i mean people that have never really had had that been exposed to those type of opportunities in different industries they have actually now at the tap of a button that they can do something they can transport their ideas visually it's fantastic so i'm sorry I'm not insights. Away, Paula. <laughs> excellent insights felipe can i put that same question to you um, sure. But more with a focus of NFTs, you're doing NFTs for loyalty and engagement. So how have these played a role in your personal brand and what op unique opportunities do they offer? Yeah, sure. So, so yeah, I think I am more on, a, on the a utility side and on the collector side of the NFTs, right? Which, which is also very interesting because it shows the versatility of of the of the technology itself so one of the reasons why i love nft so much is also because i'm a collector myself so maybe i'm not on the creator side i'm on the collector side i i collect things since i was a young kid trading cards magic cards small memorabilia here and there and and i think that nfts bring that level of authenticity of collectibles to the in and, and, and art and uh, to the digital realm, right? So uh, that's kind of where I started uh, in this world. And and my connection started with mingling with other collectors, which ends up doing mingling with creators too, and mingling with communities. So kind of, I was driven a little bit by 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 that initially, and, and eventually as, as a founder that works on NFTs, that's where it gave me an added layer of, of visibility and, and, and brand, personal brand perspective, right? Because what, uh, what we've been very focused on, on doing is bringing use cases to the technology, right? And, and, and because this is very uh, much in line with maybe with what the Web2 world looks more, you know, like what's the use case, what's the utility. Um, and, and because we've been so actively focused on working on projects that bring that utility, that, that has given me a, kind of a, a, a good brand perception, especially around the local communities, for example, around uh, Portugal, some, some internet communities, but even on a very local basis. Uh, and and growing up a little bit further in London too is that people think about people when maybe organizations, uh, corporations, creators that are not so much into this 
world, right? Whenever they think I want to know more or speak more about this, uh, they think about crowd class or Philippe, right? So it it it, it builds up. So and and on that sense, uh, NFTs have been helping me also to to grow my my own personal. Uh, well, that brand. leads me nicely into the next question that I had on and. Um, in contrast to our other panelists this evening, you're a founder and the other panelists are building very much a personal brand for their own development, whether it be individual projects or just wanting to be known in the Web3 space, whereas you're building your personal brand as a founder of a startup. Yeah. So because of this, you're kind of positioning yourself as a thought leader in the industry. So how has thought leadership helped you grow your personal brand and what strategies have you employed to establish yourself as this influential vo voice? Yeah, I'm still figuring out a lot of stuff, but, uh, but for, for answering your first question again, the answer is how has been built, how is doing thought leadership helping me build a brand, uh, a personal brand? And how that is helping crowd class it's it's immense right because again uh it's it's almost it's a personal strategy but it's also a a, a startup strategy uh that has been working quite well right we we had a grassroots uh uh startup we we don't have a lot of funding right and and people relate with other people not with logos not with uh, concept sometimes with concept, but relations are people to people, right? And 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 it's it's much easier and and not to contact crowd class, but to contact Philippe. Uh, uh, to hey, I have a project. Hey, I have a need. Hey, I want to launch NFTs. Hey, I have an event uh, that I want to use proof of attendance NFTs. Can you help us with that? So um, or. I'm 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 hosting a webinar or I'm hosting a, a a meetup and I want to speak about NFT and use cases, right? And and uh, and that process, what's what, what's what's been very very uh, very good for us is that I am building my own personal brand, but also my personal brand is not just NFTs; it's NFTs and it's crowd class. Uh, I am I'm, I'm positioning myself as a thought leader on NFTs Web3, but I'm also positioning myself as founder of CrowdClass. Some of the posts that I do are also startup related. I also tell a little bit about our journey, about where we are, right? And it's it's that balance uh, that um, I think it's it, it's it, it's slowly growing my follower base, my audience, uh, people engage more and more. And it also leads to business generation for the um, for the for crowd class. So that's that's that, that's very very positive um, for for us. That's it. I think what you said at the start there is very very relevant. That people want to they want to network and engage with other people and not with a logo. Yeah. I would a hundred times rather Elon Musk reply to me on Twitter than Tesla. Yeah. Exactly, and, and and if you think about it, there there, Elon Musk is uh, probably the busiest guy in the world, and he still replies to some random tweets, and he tweets all the time. So well, I'm if, not if, expecting him to reply to me, but I just took that as an example of a brand. But he does, he does reply randomly to people, and it's, 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 sometimes you get replies from Elon Musk without expecting it, and he tweets and he interacts, right? So, um, so it, it just shows a little bit more level of relationship, and and if here is that. Yeah. But nobody would share a comment from Tesla. Exactly. Exactly. It's uh, super so it's interesting. The it's it's the person, right? And 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 that's the same, right? We my my posts and and but but there's obviously a branding side that we want to build on on crowd class, but but my posts always have much more engagement than than our um institutional, let's say, uh account. Uh, and that's and that's normal. Uh, and then yeah, and that's I, fi I find that myself with a block of crypto Twitter and my personal that I get an awful lot more of engagement in my personal than 
than the brand one. And it's a it's a hard toss up of where to spend the time until you're given a bit of mentoring and you follow others like yourself and you see it working that way that you tend to say, oh, this might work a little bit better. I think that's really useful information for anybody here that's part of a startup or is thinking about mm-hmm. becoming a founder. Um, yeah, Laura, moving on to you now for a moment. As a business developer and as a marketing strategist, how have you leveraged your brand to empower entrepreneurs and startups in the web web tree ecosystem? Yeah, thanks. Um, I think that I I want to think that I lead by example. So the things that I do is like I try to be on top of all the trends that are happening, you know, all the developments in the Web2 space. Um, and this actually allows me to offer relevant and relevant and timely insights to my clients and to my audience, you know, helping them to navigate um, this rapidly landscape because it's super, yeah. it's super fast and things change in a bit. So if you start up to the trends, um, yeah, you can create value for yourself and also position yourself as a thought leader, as you were saying before. Um, I think that, yeah, actually, if you if you are um, aware of that, you can go ahead and foster in meaningful connections within the Web3 community. And I think that that's the most important thing that you can have um, once you have a community or a lot of, you know, or people, doesn't need to be a lot of people, but people that stuck with you, that uh, are there for you every time that you need something and that are willing to help you, um, that's, that's the most valuable thing that you can that you can have. And you get that, but giving, actually, you know, giving, giving yeah. your knowledge, giving your time, giving your, you know, giving your, your tips and tricks. Um, and yeah, yeah, by connecting entrepreneurs with different relevant individuals as as well, you know, so. And there's a seems to be a slightly different strategy in Web3 than there was in Web2, whereas I done a lot of personal branding in Web2 when it came to a different subject matter expert that I subject that I talked about. And in Web2, it was always about giving away the why and never giving away the how. Exactly. And I think yes. In Web3, we all just want to help each other so much. We're all just giving away the why and the how. Exactly. Yes. Actually, is 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 a this is this is like a common saying in Web3 space that is like um, collaboration over competition. You know, so you get you get to collab with a lot of people, but at the same time that people is helping you as well, you know, to to get better in your public speaking, for example, to get better in your skills about trying to explain a a hard topic as it is the technology behind the NFTs or the technology behind blockchain um, and get it watered down in a simple phrases or simple words that everybody can understand, you know? So, and those are super, super like, um good skills to have you know <laughs> because yeah. Yeah, it opens the door for you very much opens the door maria um you're coming to us as a social media manager and a web tree advocate how have you utilized social media platforms to grow your personal brand and to promote yourself in the web tree ecosystem Okay, um, so basically, I when I joined um, social media, when I started out on my LinkedIn um, page, I had no idea what Web3 was all about. I was just, my journey out on LinkedIn was as a result of uh, me wanting to put my time into something because at that moment in my life, I was super depressed because I just lost my uncle and um, he was the one I grew up with. He was the one who brought me up. So I just lost him at that point and I was grieving. So instead of just staying and crying and just like being by myself and all of that, I needed to channel that energy into something. So I started on LinkedIn and every day I would put out content. And to, funny enough, 
I wasn't getting a single engagement at that point. Like nobody was seeing my post, nobody was engaging. So, but I, I continued and I kept at it. And I don't know up to this very moment. I can't define at what point I started growing on LinkedIn and I got to the point that I am currently. So when I, I started out on LinkedIn, I, I kept at it. But then I was just sharing um things. I think basically motivation and just sharing my thoughts, sharing my story and all of that. And gradually I grew, gradually. I think my building my personal brand on LinkedIn, it's not been easy in all honesty. It's not been easy. And it's laughable that my first job on LinkedIn, the first job I got on LinkedIn was not up to $20. Yeah, I know it's, 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 it was that bad, but it was something that I was able to, okay, I, I knew that, okay, I got this for myself. This yeah. came to me as a result of my efforts for myself. So I was very proud of myself and I was glad that, okay, if I could get up to this, if I could get a job here on LinkedIn, I think I can get more. And I stayed put at it. I kept showing up every day. I was so consistent that the numbers were growing every day people were following every day sometimes I wonder and I'm like what are you people following do people see me as somebody who has so much sense because I I looked down so much on myself at that point and but there were days when I was getting over 200 people were following in a day 100 people were following and it was giving me joy I was happy and that encouraged me to keep showing up the more so before I knew it, I was able to build relationships with people. I was able to connect with people, even though it was in jobs, but I was able to ask questions from people who were already in my field and who were very experienced in my field. So that gave me an edge. LinkedIn gave me an edge to network with people from different parts of the world and to be able to, uh, even though I don't, I'm not a founder, I'm not a business owner and all of that, I'm able to connect with people who are way ahead than I am. So um, for, for, for building a brand as a Web3 person, I would say that is still very much in process because a lot of people don't know me as an authority in Web3 yet. And that's one thing that I want to work on. But so far, building a personal brand on LinkedIn has been, I think it's been very worth it. It's been very worth it because from that first job of, less than $20 I've gotten more and it's I think the the ride continues the ride continues I think the key message I'm taking away from that is um be consistent and show up every day right it's it's it might not be every day you're showing up might not be from Monday to Friday or to Sunday but make sure that whatever it is that you define as consistency make sure that you stick to it excellent it's also super interesting to hear about your self-confidence growth and you know how you were feeling down and this really encouraged you and helped you and by listening to you now that doesn't sound like you have any issues with self-confidence no I don't anymore I think I can I can stand anywhere before no matter how big the audience might be I can stand anywhere and talk about whatever it is that I am asked to talk about. And I would say being in this meeting today shows that my confidence is there and it's, 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 um, I would say it's, it's not on a very high level because the normal me, the past me would not, I would have easily just turned it down when um, we started talking and all of that but so yeah I, I would say it has it has risen to a very high point excellent excellent okay Joyce coming back to you for a minute um in the decentralized world personal branding can have a, a significant impact on job applications and career opportunities like not everybody wants to build a personal brand to become an influencer. Not everybody wants to build a personal brand because they're self-employed or they're an entrepreneur. Some people are just seeking jobs. They just want to, they just want a job in the Web3 space. So how do you believe personal branding in Web3, whether through platforms like LinkedIn or Twitter, can influence job seekers prospects? And 
What are the potential challenges that they should be aware of? Well, I suppose, I mean, we're living in a digital age now, so everybody should realise that every content and every platform they engage in is part of their personal brand. And they should be super conscious and aware of what they are actually sharing because you're actually putting yourself out into the world. Um, I think in this um, digital age, uh, I mean, the three R's are relevant when you're talking about anything, your personality, your character. I mean, it is all a build up of what a brand, personal brand is. I mean, to be recognized, remembered and revered. We're all trying to do that. But like, I mean, at the end of the day, this being the, how can I say, the highway, the, the internet highway at the minute, everybody has to realize what they put out there is a reflection of thyself. And if you are in, in trying to gain employment, people do look at your social media engagement. I mean, they say they don't, but they actually do. I mean, I'm not coming from a HR background, but I'm not, I mean, you don't have to be ignorant to the fact that like what you put out there, you, you, it comes back upon you. So, I mean, you should actually, everybody should have some kind of like level of self portfolio of thought about branding themselves, about what direction they want to take. I mean, tomorrow morning, we could all be looking for different jobs, but at the end of the day, it's what you've, your momentum to date, what you've actually built up on all these social platforms is going to be a total, how can I say, finger pointing moment for yourself. So, I mean, as a creative thinker and a storyteller, I am very much, um, I've been very much intensive about what I actually put out there and the words I use and the wording. Um, because at the end of the day, I want to let people see me as being open and honest with everything. Um, I'm not saying I'm skilled in everything, but I'd like to, have, like to say that I have some not degree of knowledge in certain things that I engage in. Um, I suppose you, you asked me a while ago about NFTs and so on and so forth. I suppose the reason as well as an artist I got into NFTs is to show my the level of authenticity of the work that I produce. I mean, it's mm. it, when it once once it gets minted on a block, it's there, it's done. It was done ten years ago. It was done five years ago. It it, it has a history. It has a trail, and that's what a, that's what branding is all about, basically. You're an NFT. You're a non-functional token. You're individual and you're unique. And I mean, the big blockchain of it all is the internet highway. I mean, once you have these different engaging different platforms and so on and so forth, with your name trailing to it, you own that. You have to take responsibility for what you, you, you put out there. And so far as looking for jobs and job seeking, I think if you come across as uh, authentic and uh, approachable and, of course, the three R's again, recognized for being so. I mean, remember and let people remember you for your approachability, even giddiness, Paula, <laughs> <laughs> or humor. <laughs> but like at the end of the day, your personal brand is when you leave a room, people will talk about you. And it's the way they talk about you that you'll be remembered by and how you made them feel, basically. But I think it being for job seeking and so on and so forth. Your personal brand, you need to be able to tell the world, this is me, this is who I am, and this is the direction I really want to go in. And I think mm. if you're singing off the same hymn sheet across all social media, then then that, I mean, HR management and so on and so forth, people looking at you, recruiters, they'll understand that you're translucent throughout, throughout the whole lot. I mean, you're transparent for the world to see that this is you. This is the direction you want to go in. I mean, of late, I've completed a diploma into, in environment, environmental management because I think as a visual storyteller, as somebody that wants to leave this world with a bit of worth because I've been a mother myself, I kind of like started like want to be able to utilize my messages for the good to educate people. So, I mean, my some of my new, I'm actually 
put up on LinkedIn. I, I changed my profile there two weeks ago that I wanted to be a sustain, sustainability champion because I've I seen think that. You, yeah. 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 I mean, I was always an NFT evangelist. But listen to yeah. me, we were, we were many hats, Paula, going through <laughs> life. <laughs> and I think I everybody really should be that analogy that you gave us there Joyce that we're all just NFTs yes. and the blockchain or the super highway that we're on is is basically online it kind of gave me the shivers a little bit when you said that but I think it, it, it remains true it doesn't matter whether you're in web one web two or web three well web one you can't do it in because it's just too static but web two or web three that what you're putting out there be honest be credible keep it consistent across platforms so people will know that you're reliable and stuff like that. I think that's that's all super important. Um, to Felipe and Laura, there are lots of individuals in the audience that are interested in working for established companies or organizations in Web3. So how can they effectively showcase their personal brand while also aligning with the branding values of any potential employer? Uh, I can I can go uh, and, and, yeah. and again this is uh, maybe giving again all advice is always survivorship bias so uh, be careful um, but um, I think that uh, first and and like Joyce said brand personal brand building and, and Marielle said happens every day with a consistent uh, approach. And, and yeah, everything that you will do eventually will start to create an image of you uh, towards uh, towards towards others. I think that to to work on Web three, personal branding can can be a great unlocker uh, because a, a lot of pure Web three companies are still don't have highly established HR processes um they are really don't have uh, those hr funnels that are very uh common on on big corporations so a lot of the hiring happens with uh, by the founders or by persons that are close to the founders that have a lot to do and um the faster you help them make a decision on who to hire the better right and and so uh, a, a personal brand uh, might even get, start getting you in contact or in interactions with possible future employers without necessarily asking or or looking for a job when 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 you are looking for, right. So build your start building your personal brand before going on job hiring, and then naturally transition into that. Right, just maybe find opportunities that because you're just so active, they 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 pop up. I think that is important, and I think it was already mentioned here. Is also take note on the platform of choice, depending on the type of company you want to work on. Right, so yeah, uh, there's if you want to go on maybe Web three, but applying Web three to more real world cases or uh, or a more uh, uh, organization-wide or corporate-wide applications. Maybe LinkedIn, that's where you want to be, right? But if you want to be very native, working on DAOs, on these purely decentralized organizations, maybe you want to be more on Twitter. If you want to be more on creative sides and on um, more entertainment slash uh, IP brand plays, that are Web3, it's maybe a mix between Twitter and Instagram. And also depending on Twitter, it really depends on the sub-communities that you participate in and follow. Um, so I think that's also something to, to be aware is understand yeah. if, if there's a particular kind of environment that you want to work on, understand what is the best platform to focus on, right? Maybe you you focus on two, but maybe you spend eighty percent of seventy percent of time on one platform, than um, than than the other. And and giving a personal example, I've been highly focused on LinkedIn because I know that uh, most of our um, 
actual customers and users are more actively on LinkedIn. I'm starting to look more again on Twitter. I have an account on Twitter that I've been putting maybe 20% of my effort. I might increase a little bit of that because further down the line, I see that we are also going to be more active on those types of users. And, and so when you are looking for jobs or build a brand, I think everyone should start building a brand somehow. It's good. Even when you are employed, it's good for your employer for you to have a brand. But if you're thinking on branding from a transition perspective, understanding the platform you want to be based on the type of Web3 company you want to work on is very, very, very important. And it is very different. LinkedIn versus Absolutely. Twitter. LinkedIn is more professional. Twitter is more, um, yo, bro. Uh, you've got the decentralized apps. You've got all the people that want to remain anonymous. Um, yeah. And to put it bluntly, it can be an awful lot more sketchy on Twitter. And I do apologize for any big Twitter users here, but it's an awful lot more sketchy on Twitter than it is on LinkedIn. So I think you made a really valuable point. Laura, do you want to jump in there on that same question? Sure. Yeah, the business developer in me um, have seven seven steps to to get you to your future employer <laughs> okay give um, us these seven steps so <laughs> yeah number one it will be research research and understand the potential employer um it's super important that you understand their mission their vision their values and that that's something that you can figure it out just going to their websites you know um and then start following everybody that is, for example, if you want to work on, I don't know, let's say um, Nike. I don't know, it's just an example, right? Uh, so go to the page, to the corporate page, then go to the, and, and get aware of the values and, and everything. And then go to LinkedIn and start following everybody there. You know, once you get a big name, then you will see, you know, the employees and then you will see um, the HR people um, and reach out. There is nothing wrong with reaching out, you know, just don't reach out out of the need to get hired for that job. Just reach out as a as a person, you know, like um, and a state that you want to learn more about the company, that you want to learn more about that particular um, job or 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 uh, section or whatever you want to you want to do over there. Um, yeah, that's the first step. Then the second step, it will be like reflect your values and expertise on your content, you know? But at the same time, it's like um, identify your own values and areas of expertise within the Web3 industry, if that's something that you want, right? Um, and of course, showcase showcase that every in every in every place. On LinkedIn, that is my expertise. On my my yeah, my expertise, um, I will say that you will need to update, to keep update, and also um, yeah, your your LinkedIn profile, your personal website, and also if you have a blog, go ahead and start using the examples of that company that you want to go in. Great right idea. You know. Yeah. Um, and also emphasize your unique perspectives, your achievements and contributions and everything. You know? Then number three is like tailor your content. Um, of course, sharing content is something that you need to do, <laughs> you know, but you need to take into account that your target or your audience is that employer, you know, it's that company, it's that people that is behind the, the gate you know, it's like the gatekeeper, so you need to pass pass that through. And also, number four, it will be engaging conversations, um, and this is something super easy to do. Uh, talking about Web three companies or startups, because, uh, for example, I can go to Felipe's uh, Felipe profile on LinkedIn and engage in all the comments people made from his yeah. post. You know, so I can go ahead and engage to everyone. You know, and and provide value. Not only say, "Hey, great post." You know, it's like try to do, try to think a little bit, and uh, to be a little, uh, you know, to clever and smart, and add value to that as well. Um, then, 
What else? Number five is showcase the projects and collaborations. If you have some, if you don't have any collaboration yet, go ahead and look for someone to get a collaboration with. You know, it's like you can do a LinkedIn audio, you can do um, a video, you can showcase a carousel, um, whatever. You know, just um, because in that in that way, you you not only have your own audience, but you will reach the other person audience as well. So it will explode, <laughs> you know, it will uh, enlarge your, your own audience as well. Uh, number six, it will be network and seek mentorship if you need it. Um, these kind of events are great for that. Uh, so keep continuing, you know, like looking for meetups and looking for conferences if you if you have the opportunity to go um, look for events in the metaverse as well a lot of the people that are in the metaverse are super into that and they are willing to help you to become one of them you know so yeah. so go ahead and take the opportunity one more time same thing with twitter spaces for example um and then the number seven and i finish it will be like adapt adapt and evolve you know um, you need to this is a very dynamic space web3 space is super dynamic and it's constantly evolving so you will need to step up with the latest trends the technology the industry development and of course you will need to adapt your personal brand accordingly it's not that you are you are going to become an ai expert overnight but go ahead and try to figure out the tools, figure out the algorithm, figure it out, you know, just take a course over um, YouTube. Or, you know, there is there are a lot of courses for free. For example, the yeah. Paula, Paula got an amazing course on Web3 and is for free, you know. So take advantage of that, educate yourself and use it, you know, as, as a trampoline to get the employee or the, the job that you want. That's it. That's a super valuable nugget that you're after sharing, I think, with everybody there. Thank you very much for that. Maria, moving on to you now. Um, and from my perspective, you're definitely a from a much younger generation to myself. So looking ahead from your point of view and looking to the future and that, how do you envision personal branding evolving in the Web3 ecosystem? And I think it's the younger people that are going to shape this. And that for that reason, you're most apt to address this question. All right. Um, thank you very much. So I think for me, as a young person in Web3, if there is anything that I would do or I would do better, it is how I structure my content and how I put myself and my things out there. So for a lot of us, when on our personal pages, when we talk about Web3, it is always something that is, it is always so technical. We use languages that the layman somebody without any Web3 experience finds it difficult to comprehend. I had a similar, I've, I've had such experiences where people come to me and they're like, oh, I don't understand your content. It's always, I, I, I don't understand your content. It always has words that, like, I don't, I don't have any knowledge in Web3. And the, the things you put out, I find it very difficult to understand. And in as much as that makes me feel not so good, but it's a constructive criticism. So I think to be able to shape one's brand properly in the Web3 space, we, we, we need to be open to um, criticisms. And another thing, most importantly, make sure that whatever you are putting out there is something that people in other industries can relate with and make sense of. Because I don't think the Web3 and the blockchain space is not successful until the masses are able to understand and we're able to create something for the masses that even a person that has not gone to school that doesn't really know so much can use something created from the blockchain and the decentralized finance, all of the um, tools in Web3. So 
we need to also be able to understand all the social media, whatever social media platform that you choose to use to brand yourself in the Web3 space. Make sure that you understand it and you are able to give it your all. Don't choose three platforms at once. Choose a particular platform, grow there, nurture yourself there, and then you can move to another platform. I started with LinkedIn and now I want to move to Twitter. And I would say I have 100% um, conquered LinkedIn, but to a great extent, I know that I have been able to make something good out of um, LinkedIn. So understand whatever platform you are on because that will help you shape because the language of Twitter is not the language of LinkedIn. 100%. LinkedIn, is, oh. LinkedIn uses a more professional language. LinkedIn is more put together than Twitter. Twitter, almost anything goes. I know. So, <laughs> sorry about that. No, any, you're right. Almost, you're so almost right. Anything, anything goes on LinkedIn or anything goes on Twitter. So understand the platform, understand the, the, the language, the jargon of that platform. Because if you don't, on, LinkedIn, on, on Twitter, you go and, and you see and you see things when Web3 people make uh, posts, you see things like, let's fucking go. You see things like emojis. and But you, if you bring that to LinkedIn, LinkedIn might flag your account and maybe ban you or suspend you for a while. So understand the platform you are on. Make sure that your contents are not so technical that people cannot relate with. Whether you are a founder, whether you are a, but whether you are a HR person, whether you are a social media manager like me, whether you're a content creator, make sure that everything you put out is something that even somebody, anybody can pass across your content and say, oh, I understand what, what this person is talking about. And a lot of us here might have heard this before, but it is to say storytelling, storytelling, storytelling. And I bring it back to the issue of content again. When you're creating your content, let there be a stress reliever. Let there not be so much. Let me read your content and get to a point and then I see something and I read and I smile and it still makes sense to me. So let there always be a sort of like a break between your content that people can see they can read and then they're like oh he or she knows what that he's talking about use different scenarios to talk about your scenarios that are relatable to talk about your whatever it is that you're sharing about web3 i think that's it for me for um for, for web3 excellent excellent well look we're just running over on time now so well, can i just one say one final. thing yeah well, go ahead and I just say one thing, like Web3 for me, I mean, I've been to many conferences around the world now. I always love the sense of inclusiveness. I mean, I yeah. know you were targeted at the younger generation. Me being in my 40s, I've never been made to feel that I wasn't welcome in any of these conferences or any kind, anything I could contribute was was there was no ageism involved, I should say, yeah. or cultural background. And I think that's why I really love this space because there is no um bar barriers or borders to participation which is massive i mean like you can be from anywhere i mean <laughs> i suppose uh, i suppose the anonymity of every every aviators at the time people were putting up the monkeys and stuff like that the, yeah it could have been anyone anything i mean even children were engaging and making nfts and you know trying to start up new startups i mean there was one young full of 16 I mean, I just think it's fabulous. But like there was somebody like I met a guy over in Paris and he was nearly hitting 80 and he was still, you know, he, he wanted to start up a new startup. I mean, I think that's there's no other industry, infant industry. That's why I love this. It's an infant industry. There was no bars to hit. There was no. How can I say there's no it's a domino effect. I mean, it, everybody. And I mean it's the most in it's one of these industries that you are you actually don't feel silly for asking questions because that's how you learn and i think it, it's an industry as well that people they do actually want to help you i mean it's it, it's it's very much like that and i i know the question laura said while ago about your brand aligning your brand with the brand that you're trying to get, represent in an employment base but i think as well as that if you look at people's 
mission statements on their profiles in the, in different platforms and then you look at where they're working if they align them with the values of their employer i think you you gain so much more momentum and respect going forward that you actually become more well in yourself an excellent point sense. joyce yeah no that's that's an excellent point well, look, just to wrap up, I'm going to go through a final question um, to please. everybody. I'm sorry, I have something to say. Yeah. Okay, Um, I don't remember her name clearly, but I think it's the person that just spoke. She, she said something, and I want to um, talk about that again. I'll be very fast. So as we yeah, go ahead. Um, building a, a brand on social media, a personal brand on social media, especially on LinkedIn, I can tell you that that can answer for your CV, your LinkedIn profile, if well built, can answer for your CV. I once got a job, I got a job recently, and this company never asked for my CV. All they said was, send me your LinkedIn profile. I sent it and I have that job today. So whatever it is that you can put into building your brand, whatever it is you can put into building yourself personally on social media, please give it your all. Give it your all because opportunities can come somebody can just look at your profile and say hey i think this person is a good fit for our company so yeah give it your all your your, your linkedin profile can answer as your cv yeah that's it i fully agree with that and i'll give a personal experience of that that i done i used to be involved in the microsoft excel space and i used to share content on that quite a lot um, and it was from doing so that I actually got hired by LinkedIn themselves to review their Excel skills tests. And I never needed to send them a CV. I didn't even need to apply for the job. They came to me. So I can definitely uh, confirm what you're saying there is back is very much factual. So look, just a closing remark I- from everybody. Um, oh. Any final thoughts or advice that you have for our audience? on personal branding in the decentralized world. Laura, I'll go to you first. Yeah. Um, Just show up, do your best, and don't be attached to the outcome. Because if it goes in the wrong direction, you give your best. And if it goes well, you did your best. So just show up, do your thing. You know, be consistent and stay actually ethical, responsible. <laughs> and that's it. Felipe. My my advice would be again very similar. Show up, be be consistent, engage. Okay. And uh, maybe one one note is iterate and test, you know, t- test different things. Try video, try text. Try short form, try long form, try a little bit more longer in prose, try a little bit more flashy and with some buzzwords, see what works, see what doesn't, and and uh, show up and test and, and, and keep doing it. That's, that, that's what I would say. Excellent. And Maria, yourself, any final thoughts? Any final thoughts, Maria? We may have lost Maria. I Joyce, think, I'll just... Oh, yeah, I don't well. think I have any final thoughts. Whatever I have to say, um, you said it already. Excellent. And Joyce, any final thoughts or words of inspiration for everybody here? Well, I suppose you're in the driving seat of your life and your brand that you're putting out there is in your control completely. And whatever you engage in, let that be your reputation nar- narrative. Whatever you say and you put out there, be responsible and understand that it's part of you. You're putting it out there into the universe. I suppose your brand at the end of the day is a, like a giant magnet. It will attract what you want going forward. I mean, as a brand, as having a person, as being a person that if you can see something ahead, you've got something to aim for. So you have to align your values and your brand to that. Make your mission daily to hit that that direction head on and go for it. And I suppose, as I say to most people, (laughs) be bold, be brave and be yourself. (laughs) (laughs) I love it. Love it. 
<laughs> well, look, on that enthusiastic note from Joyce, we are going to end it there because we've gone slightly over time. So I'd like to give a huge thank you to our panelists, to Laura, to Maria, to Felipe, and to um who did I not name there? Joyce. Sorry. <laughs> Joyce. Oh, brain moment. Um, all right. Big thank you very much for your time this evening. I think you've get you've all between you has given some really golden nuggets of information there. I have dropped a link into the chat. I'm going to drop it in again for anybody that's interested in growing their social brand through hosting meetups. Um, and this is something myself and Simon have been doing for the last couple of years is growing our personal brand here on meetups.com as well as other profiles. And we found it very beneficial running meetups to help accelerate the growth of our personal brand. So I've dropped a link in there if anybody else is interested in hosting meetups that we can have a chat to you about it at another time. Um, but thank you all very much to my panel. And on that, I will end the recording and we will finish up. Thank you all very much. <laughs>